and welcome to another installment of Erin's Book Club. I have a book review to do today and because I haven't been able to sleep last night because there's a lot of things going on in my personal life, I thought I'd get up at 3 in the morning and do a book review before I had to go to work. Um, so here it is. The book review I have to do today is Frozen in Amber by Phyllis Ames. And if you can see the cover, it's a halfway decent cover. I don't really like it. It just doesn't say anything about the story. And the story had a good premise. I'll say that. And it excited me when I read the back of it. But this is my first experience with Phyllis Ames. And I, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm disappointed because I felt the story entertaining. But... I don't even know how to describe it. It's basically, again, spoiler uh, alerts. If you haven't read this book, read it and come back because I am going to spoil the book. But it's basically about a... a wear animal culture, or skinwalkers is what they're sometimes called because there's a um, character that's supposed to be Native American who calls them skinwalkers. And there's wear cougars, there's wear wolves, there's wear eagles. Uh, wear rats um, throughout the book and and the premise is that there's a human out who's trying to cure wearism and the main character of the book is hopeful for the cure she thinks because when she did finally become wear she ended up killing her boyfriend um, so the premise is there the, the problem is with the author, it just kind of felt like the author was trying to beat you over the head and say, hey, remember these guys are where? Because you would be getting into the flow of things, understanding how things worked, and then she would all of a sudden describe people doing things that are completely out of nature for people and that if they did it in society, which these characters do, they would probably be looked at and attention would be drawn to them and the whole premise is that the wear community was supposed to be secret. Like the one of the wear eagles would um, would perch on a chair when excited or nervous and literally two front like the two feet on the chair and then crouch over your feet instead of sitting, which really pulled you out of the story because you'd be following along with these little subtle hints about how these wear folk would intermingle with humans like their scent was way more powerful than I think even animal sense and their their sense of smell sense of sight all this other things um and then she would jump into a person crouching on a chair um it just or the same person would be sitting with their their arms kind of up like this as if they were about ready to take flight and in normal society, that would not work. If you're going to try to have a premise of a book where the the characters are hiding their wearism from normal society, then they need to be able to copy normal human behavior. And I have a sneaking, like, I had a feeling that she was only describing this to try to beat it over our heads that remember that these folks were rare, were rare, which was not necessary. She didn't have to do that because she was already saying the heightened senses. And the love story in this book was like we could have taken it out and it really wouldn't have changed anything except for the very end and the very end pissed me off because the whole concept of spending the entire book trying to be comfortable with your wearism and spending the entire book accepting learning to accept your wearism only to technically have your wearism die and then because you kissed this other wear and swap saliva that way, you now are turned into a different type of wear. So you went from a wear cougar to a golden eagle, just so that you could match the bald eagle that was the love interest. And that's specifically why it happened. There, there was, there was really no reason for that to happen. Like, it could have just ended as she healed in the wear form. That's that's all it had. There was no reason for her to switch wears. Like it just. And there was this weird thing about inbreeding throughout it. At just, it was, it was, I would get really into the book and then she would describe a wear behavior that was way out of orthodox from normal human behavior, which would kick me out of the story. So it took me a while to get back into the story. So I was very frustrated reading this book and parts of it I was very intrigued into. Even some of the lawyer parts, which I have absolutely no interest in law or legal stuff, 
But because they worked at a law practice and were lawyers, this was all throughout the book, and I enjoyed reading about that. But it would have been a much more entertaining book if it was a solely a lawyer case book or solely a where living in a where society book. But her trying to intermingle the two just killed it. <laughs> so I guess it's a good book. It's not a great book. It's not one that I'm going to come back to read to because I just I have no interest. And it it's a shame because I also have really no interest in trying any more of this Phyllis Ames book. So I don't know. But I will let you know when I have another book read. Thanks, guys.